colleges which contributed, but I must specifically mention uh, Sri Lanka College, uh, uh, Ceylon College of Physicians, uh, Sri Lanka College of Internal Medicine, Sri Lanka College of uh, Pediatricians, and other uh, relevant colleges, uh, Sri Lanka College of um, Gastrointestinal, uh, uh, Gastrointestinal uh, College and uh, Hematology College. So uh, a, a long list of uh, relevant colleges contributed to this uh, development of this guideline. So without much ado, I will uh, now uh, uh, introduce the speaker. Uh, I think uh, does not need any uh, introduction, Professor Chamila Metananda. Uh, she is a specialist uh, physician and she is a professor in pharmacology at the Faculty of Medicine University of Kalania. Uh, she has been a quite active member in both the uh, College of Physicians as well as, uh, as, well as College of uh, Internal Medicine. Uh, and um, she has taken a, a lead role in developing this guideline along with the representations from other uh, specialist colleges. So thank you very much, Chamila, for, for your uh, leadership in this. Uh, and I would invite you to now uh, do the presenting. Thank you. Over to you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, Madam, for that kind words of introduction. And at the outset, I must thank uh, uh, SLMA, the Medicinal Drugs Committee of SLMA, uh, and the um, Sri Lanka College of Clinical Farm uh, Association of Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics for the uh, for inviting me to do this presentation on behalf of the Guideline Development Committee. So today we are going to uh, talk about rational use of human albumin. Okay. So I don't have any conflicts of interest to declare, and I am presenting this on behalf of the Guideline Development Committee. Now, first of all, we need to uh, know why we are talking about this, uh, as Madam also uh, uh, elaborated on that. Why? Especially, why do we need guidelines for albumin use, especially for Sri Lanka? So the main reason is, if you look at this table, shows the uh, amount of money health budget that we have used for purchasing medicine in Sri Lanka in 2023. So if you look at this, the first, the highest cost was for uh, connective place purchase, which was 1.9 billion. And the second highest is for human albumin in 2023, which costed about 1.3 billion rupees. That means like, I mean, human albumin, we have only purchased 200,000 uh, 200, vials. And like human albumin is not a very, very commonly used drug in the country. So as a low middle income country, we need to use our money in a rational way. So we may be able to use that uh, money for uh, very important to purchase very important medicines if we rationally use albumin. So that is the main reason why we uh, uh, thought of developing a guideline. Now, if we look at the available therapies, so like, I mean, if we are just using albumin for uh, volume replacement or like without just go don't go uh, without going by guidelines that cost a lot because like I mean a, a 500 ml of normal saline costs only 171 rupees and if you take a 500 ml of Hartman that is uh, that costs 192 rupees but 20 percent albumin 50 ml costs 6,600 rupees. So that is a huge difference. Therefore, the um, National Medicines Regulatory Authority, the SLMA Intercollegiate Meet, uh, Committee, Ceylon College of Physicians, and SLACPT all got together uh, to find a solution for this. Our strategy, there are three things. We thought of developing a guideline. And then the second thing is to introduce the guideline nationally and to implement it in a rational way. And then to audit albumin use prior to guideline use as well as after implementation of the guideline. So talking about developing a guideline, so 
we all the colleges, the relevant colleges that use albumin, we got together and this is the guideline development committee. So we referred the latest gastrointestinal, renal, hematology, the acute emergency medicine, the sepsis and pediatric guidelines, and then developed the albumin uh, guideline for Sri Lanka for 2024. So or the colleges wise, the Sri Lanka Association of Clinical Pharmacology, the Sri Lanka Association of Nephrologists, Sri Lanka Society of Gastroenterology, the Co Sri Lanka College of Transfusion Physicians, Sri Lanka College of Internal Medicine, uh, the Ceylon College of Critical Care Specialists, uh, Sri Lanka College of Pediatricians, and Ceylon College of Physicians. All um, the all the colleges were represented. Uh, in this guideline development committee. So the, there, there, were, there are two main policies in this guideline. One is all prescription should comply with the, uh, the guideline and the criteria that we are suggesting. So one is like any prescription of albumin should give a definite indication for the use of albumin and there should be a definite endpoint as well. And then uh, we suggest that uh, all albumin requests should come through an uh, request form so that we can uh, replace the buffer stocks and there is some accountability and we can audit for what purposes and by whom albumin was used. And then uh, the doses will should be rounded up to the nearest wire size to avoid uh, wastage. And the second thing is, if there are any requests that are coming outside the guideline, that request should come through a consultant. And we will audit those requests and take necessary actions depending on uh, what we finally find. Whether if, if those requests are uh, justifiable, we can include them in the guideline. And I must uh, uh, telling at the beginning, this guideline do not apply to intraoperative albumin use because intraoperative use is an emergency where you can't wait for uh, filling forms and uh, uh, they can't go by the guidelines in an emergency um, because it is uh, the clinical decision at that time. Now, according to our guideline, there are only seven um, approved indications for use albumin. This is not only for Sri Lanka. If you take all over the country, because we all over the world, because we have referred all the guidelines. So even in a Western country, these are the indications to give albumin. So number one, so I will quickly go through the seven and then go uh, in detail with them. So one is large volume paracentesis. Number two is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Number three, hepatorenal syndrome. Number four, severe nephrotic syndrome. Number five, plasma exchange. Number six, septic shock. And number seven is ascites with hypoalbuminemia in children. So these are the seven approved uh, May indications for use of albumin. So if we go one by one, so large volume paracentesis, I actually need not tell you the definition, you know the definition very well, but just to give you a brief idea. So large volume paracentesis is if you do remove uh, acetic fluid more than five liters um, within 24 hours in a patient with decompensated advanced chronic liver cell disease. And we do this, we give albumin to prevent them going into circulatory failure following paracentesis. So the recommendation is, I told you every prescription, there should be the indication, the dose and the duration. So the recommendation is IV albumin 20%, eight grams per liter per each liter of fluid removed in excess of five liters. So if you remove six liters for that one excess liter, more than five, you give eight grams of albumin. So under the same 
uh, indication, like there may be people who are at risk of developing uh, post paracentesis uh, circulatory dysfunction, even though you don't remove five liters of uh, fluid. So those people are like, if somebody is already having acute kidney disease, they're at risk of developing circulatory dysfunction. Or if their blood pressure is less than 90 or they are on inotropes, then again, they're at risk of going into circulatory failure. And people who have acute on chronic liver failure, they are also at risk of going into uh, post uh, paracentesis circulatory uh, dysfunction. So they are in that situation. You can give IV albumin. For each liter of fluid removed, you give eight grams um, per liter removed, 20% albumin. Right. So that's the first indication. So the second one is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Again, the definition you know, if the acidic fluid contains more than 500 uh, white cells per cubic millimeter, or if there is more than 250 polymer neutrophils in a cubic millimeter, or the acidic fluid culture positive. The other recommendation is 20% albumin. You give 1.5 grams per kg within first six hours of detecting SBP on day one. And then you give one gram per kg on day three. So that is the guideline used all over the world. So day one and day three. So there is an indication, dose and a duration. So and the third uh, indication is hepaturinal syndrome. So hepaturinal syndrome could be suspected or confirmed because like until we confirm, it could be a suspected hepaturinal syndrome. So how do we suspect hepaturinal syndrome? So uh, the, the definition is in a patient with decompensated advanced chronic liver cell disease with ascites and portal hypertension, if they do develop a, a see a, if you can see a serum creatinine rise of more than 0.3 milligram per deciliter within 48 hours or if serum creatinine rises by another 50 percent so 1.5 times of the normal baseline serum creatinine within last seven days or if there is a reduced urine output less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour for six hours, then you suspect hepaturinal syndrome. So there, in suspicion of hepaturinal syndrome, you give IV albumin 20%, one gram per kg per day for two days. But the maximum you give a day is 100 ml per day. that is suspected hepaturina syndrome, right? Now, once we, we suspect and then like uh, in the confirmed hepaturina syndrome with acute kidney injury, it is the definition is again in a advanced decompensated cirrhotic patient with ascites and portal hypertension, but they should not be having dehydration or shock. So if the blood pressure is very low, then it can't be hepaturina syndrome. So you have to address that. And th there should not be on ongoing nephrotoxic drugs. There shouldn't be any proteinuria more than 500 milligrams per day or hematuria more than 50 red cells per hypophene. And there shouldn't be any structurally abnormal kidney or urinary tracts. In the absence of those, if they have an AKI in a uh, a suspected uh, hepaturina syndrome patient, then it becomes diagnosed, confirmed hepaturina syndrome. Then the treatment is you give one gram per kg on day one, albumin 20%, and you follow it by about 20 to 40 grams daily with a vasoconstrictor for up to 14 days. This is the longest uh, recommend, uh, duration of recommendation. Uh, for IV albumin. So this is the third recommendation. 
Now, coming to the fourth rest, so we have now covered all the GI recommendations. Over. Those are the three gastrointestinal recommendations. Four is severe nephrotic syndrome. So again, the definition is if somebody diuretic resistant nephrotic syndrome, where you have given maximum dosage of sequential nephron blockage using loop diuretics, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists, and thiazide like diuretics. Trying all those, and if the, there is inadequate response, that is called uh, diuretic resistant nephrotic syndrome. Or if they have hypovolemia with prerenal AKI in nephrotic syndrome, or if they are at high risk of venous thrombosis, then these sort of patients are indicated to get, receive IV albumin. The recommendation is in adults, IV 20% albumin, 20 grams, followed by IV loop diuretics is the recommendation. And thereafter, the the recommendation depends on the nephrologist's opinion. Then in children, the recommendation is, again, IV 20% albumin, 0.5 to 1 gram per kg, again, followed by uh, loop diuretics. So this is the fourth recommendation. Now, coming on to fifth recommendation, it is plasma exchange. Uh, so for each volume of plasma exchanged, Two-third of the volume is usually replaced by 5% albumin and the rest by 0.9% saline. Uh, so you will see, uh, say, like, look at, so because we don't, in Sri Lanka, in the formulary, we do have only 20% albumin. We do not have 5% albumin. So here you have to reconstitute 20% albumin and use. I will tell you how to do that. But here, like the choice of replacement fluid, whether to go purely by albumin or what to use, it depends on the diagnosis and the bleeding risk. So it's a it's the uh, transfusion physician's decision. And then the percentage of albumin use, again, depends on the clinical status of the fluid status of the patient. So plasma exchange is the fifth uh, indication. Sixth one is septic shock, right? So it's considered in people who colloid unresponsive septic shock, where you have to first give colloid, try all, um, like try large volume of colloids. If it is unresponsive only, you go for albumin. So to give a measure of large volume, uh, so we gave a cutoff, like if somebody has had about 50 ml per kg of crystalloids infused and there is no response, then there is an indication for albumin. Again, the, uh, the dose is for adults, you give 5% albumin, 12.5 gram bolus. So these are given as boluses, right? Repeated as needed depending on the clinical situation. And in children, again, 5% albumin, 5 to 10 ml per kg, again, given as a bolus and depending on the need. Now, this is the last recommendation for IV albumin. Ascites with hypoalbuminemia in children. Uh, so pediatricians, they use 20% albumin uh, in children with hypoalbuminemia and ascites. So 0.5 to 1 gram per kg with uh, midway loop diuretics, depending on the course of hypoalbuminemia and the clinical judgment. So these are the seven indications to use albumin. Now, we thought it would be good to say situations where albumin is not indicated in the treatment so that it shows the distinction between the indications and uh, indications where you should not be using albumin. So PO and simple malnutrition, protein-inducing enteropathy or malabsorption, albumin is not a treatment to get albumin levels up. In pure and simple hepatic encephalopathy, albumin is not indicated. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, it's not indicated. And acute trauma for fluid resuscitation, you don't give start with albumin. Unless usually it is like in head trauma, it is contraindicated. 
then portal pressure to merely to bring down portal pressure in patients with advanced de decompensated advanced chronic liver cell disease with portal hypertension albumin is not indicated decompensated cirrhosis is not an indication for albumin Low albumin, albumin alone in nephrotic syndrome, especially in adults, is not an indication for albumin infusion. And as I told you, albumin is contraindicated in fluid resuscitation of patients with traumatic brain injury because it can cause a lot of brain edema, cerebral edema. Now, uh, I thought it would be good to give some practical points. Now, 20% albumin is the one available in our formula. It is used to mobilize fluid when in fluid or sodium intake is restricted because this is a hyper-oncotic uh, fluid. So if you give 100 ml of 20% albumin, it will expand into about 400 ml within 25 minutes. Therefore, if you give rapid and albumin injections, uh, like rapid uh, transfusions can give rise to cardiac failure. So you have to be careful. So usually we infuse albumin, 20% albumin, 100 ml, minimum over 30 minutes. And we have to use it with extreme caution in neonates because, of, because it can give rise to intraventricular hemorrhages with rapid plasma expansion. Now coming on to 5% albumin, 5% albumin is used in hypovolemic patients or intravascularly depleted patients so that it can, um, we, we can allow water uh, retention in them. Now how to make 5% albumin out of 20% albumin? Uh, the usual way to do that is you add 200, uh, 150 ml of normal saline, you, you combine 150 ml of normal saline with one vial of albumin and that will give you 20% albumin. Uh, but the practical point is uh, that in our burette sets, there is only, you can take only 150 ml it seems. So what they normally in the wards they do is like they remove an, uh, the other um, of the 500 ml, they remove the 350 ml of normal saline from a saline bottle and you put one vial of albumin into the saline bottle. That's how they usually make 5% uh, albumin. Now, coming on to the strategy, our first one was to develop a guideline, but the second one was to introduce the guideline nationally and implementation. This is the most difficult part because we do have enough guidelines for anything. The problem is that we don't use the guidelines, we don't implement it properly due to several reasons. So we thought it would be good to develop an intravenous albumin request form so that we can uh, uh, audit for what purpose, by whom, and how many vials were used um, in different hospitals. So this is, this is the on your right hand side, you can see that's the albumin request form. This is just a one A4 page, very easy to fill. Um, it's just a tick, boxing, a tick box exercise. Um, so what we suggest is that if we can ask the nursing officer in charge of the medicines in a ward to fill this form, when they request the replacement albumin virus for the buffer stocks from the pharmacy, that would be the easiest way, but we can discuss. So I'll give you a closer look of this albumin uh, request form. There are only three parts for this. The first part is about the like the demography, the patient's data and the ward and the identification data. The second part is this uh, the second part is for the indication and the dose. So it's very easy. Like uh, we have only seven indications. We have put those seven indications and you can just put a tick to say what, for what indication you are requesting albumin and you write the dose 
and the duration. And then depending on that, you can put the total number of wires requested or used for that one patient. So, but if you, you request albumin for a reason other than the seven reasons that we have given, still you can do that. You can mark it in the form and you can write your indication. We can audit it later on once we collect these forms. The third part of the form is just the identification data of the, uh, the prescribed. So finally, what we plan is like after implementing to audit albumin use uh, using that form. Uh, these are the references that uh, like, I mean, so we use the latest guidelines of all the specialities. And I think the most important is the discussion, like how to implement this and how to get it going. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, <clears throat> uh, Chamila, uh, for outlining uh, comprehensively uh, for developing this guideline and, uh, and then... Uh, you know, presenting it um, and also presenting this uh, monitoring mechanism. Um, I do not see any questions uh, coming in the uh, chat forum, uh, but I would like to um, ask you, <clears throat> uh, you know, on this uh, uh, guideline, <clears throat> uh, how much do you think generally if you take the uh, first indication, which must be most likely the most common indication where it is used, um, about how many wires would be required and what do you think based on the cost how much of money do you think we are spending uh, on treating one patient so i think like for the first indication that was uh, post transfusion so uh, no post paracentesis post uh, um to prevent a circulatory defect uh, this function so it's one only eight grams per liter of fluid removed actually like i mean this again we can cut down so like i have spoken to a lot of gastroenterologists who use albumin and what they suggest is now the first indication is if you do uh, if you do remove fluid more than five liters a day is the indication mm -hmm. You, there is no reason why you should remove five liters a day. You can do it on two, three days. Mm. Then the need of albumin is also mm. is not there. But of course, like if they have a KI or if they have a, any, like, uh, I mean, at, if they're at risk of developing post-parathentis uh, post uh, circulatory dysfunction then there we have to give but that again for one liter it's only eight grams so we'll say like if we remove two liters or three liters eight into three is 24 grams mm. so like a 20 percent albumin has 20 grams mm. so it's like 100 ml per day so that's mm. two hours maximum mm. roughly two hours okay. per person right so two Per, uh, per vial, what was the cost? Uh, 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 6,600. 6,600. So that is, you know, it is about then uh, 12,000 yes, uh, uh, rupees. Yeah. But I thought maybe the total co uh, volume is, is much more. Uh, the, oh the total volume required, uh, you know, is it only two vials or? So like, I mean, so... For each liter, above 5 liters, you have to give 8 grams. Eight grams. So 8 mm -hmm. grams is like, I mean, so uh, we'll say we remove 2 liters. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, 16 grams. Mm -hmm. Even 3 liters, it will be 24. So 20% albumin, 100 ml, do have 20 grams. 20 grams, yeah. So it's 2 hours. Two okay, okay, right. Right. And then that also we can reduce if we can space out. Space out, yeah. yeah. So I think the main thing is uh, for people to be very conscious of the amount yeah. of like, money. So I think yeah. that developing the guideline is not to cut down albumin use, yeah. but to use it rationally. rationally. Because yeah. like people, like even like, I mean, like junior doctors, they don't go by the guideline. They 
quickly, like, I mean, looking at the other practices also, they can just prescribe albumin. The main other problem is junior doctors, they don't know the cost of the medicine. Mm -hmm. So for like, I mean, even if we take antibiotics, keftriaxone and the meropenem, for them, the cost factor doesn't come into uh, mind. So likewise, it's not that they are, they want to just waste money, but mm -hmm. they don't think about that. So mm -hmm. I think giving a guideline that will enlighten them mm -hmm. so that they know how costly it is so that whenever you prescribe, you do it in a rational way, as well as when there is this form, like, I mean, they have to, they have to put the tick to say why you gave it. Mm -hmm. So if, if they can't find an indication in under those seven, then they have to think why they are giving. So that also encourages them for not to use albumin for not indicated reasons. But it, this is not to cut down the use of al albumin in a rational way. Yes, I think uh, that, that's quite clear. Um, and I think it is also very, uh, I note that... Uh, you have also given conditions where it should not be used. I think that is also very important because as quite rightly you highlighted, uh, there are situations where people are using these, uh, you know, when it is really not indicated. Yeah. So I think we can, we should um, uh, try to avoid that so that whatever the amount of money that we have is rationally used. Yes. And, and, and also you mentioned many um, uh, many problems also. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, you know, it can lead to circulatory uh, Overload. overload yeah if it is done uh, too and much, then like yeah. that will help to use albumin to needy patients mm -hmm. now what happens is when everybody is just using albumin nowadays the albumin is not freely available mm -hmm. so the indicated person will also not get, get. albumin because uh, people who are not indicated also getting albumin yes. so when we rationalize the use i think the outcome will be better. Yes. Uh, if you can mention some few things about the audit, I think there is an audit plan. Um, so I think that is, uh, you know, in several hospitals, uh, because it will be useful if we have an idea of, you know, the, the currently how much, uh, how, how is it being used? And then uh, with the introduction of the guideline, uh, how it is... Uh, uh, going to be improved. Yes, but well, I think uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Surangama Nilgama, he is uh, heading the audit. So I think audit is still going on. So he's looking at albumin use mm. before uh, the guideline. Actually, now we are still discussing. So we have not got the guideline in implementation, but yes. we have to bring it to implementation as soon as possible. So after implementing it, we also can audit uh, how albumin was used uh, using the form that we have suggested. suggested. Okay, thank you. And I think uh, today, uh, because many are in the uh, council meeting of the, of the internal, internal, uh, internal medicine, so, so they are Dr. Suraga could not join. Could not join, yes, yes. Um, so I don't think uh, see any, any other questions uh, that is posed there. Um, so in the absence of uh, questions, I think we can, uh, you know, uh, wind up the session. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Chamila Mithananda, for, um, uh, for uh, developing this guideline in collaboration with all the respective colleges and for um, informing uh, it uh, very clearly as well as the monitoring mechanism that is proposed. Let's hope that we can implement this uh, guideline and uh, with the monitoring mechanism so that we will be able to uh, use uh, human albumin rationally and uh, leading and, and save some money for the country so that it can be used um, to avoid uh, medicine shortages as well as uh, to uh, treat the patients who really need this uh, medicine. Uh, thank you very much. Thank I would like to um, uh, give this uh, uh, certificate of appreciation to you uh, for, for the uh, system. Right. So on behalf of the uh, Sri Lanka Association, uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association, as well as uh, the Sri Lanka um, Association of Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics and all the other uh, colleges and associations with uh, whom we have collaborated in developing this guideline, I wish to uh, thank uh, those who joined as well as those who uh, contributed uh, for this uh, 
uh, guideline development and 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 this discussion we will be having another uh, similar guideline uh, next month uh, that will be on uh, intravenous albumin so, uh, yeah, sorry intravenous uh, immunoglobulin which is another expensive medicine for which we have developed a guideline so i invite all of you to join uh, that uh, uh, therapeutic update as well thank you very much